70 years ago, a small group of British businessmen traveled to China. They became known as the icebreakers. Now meet the bridge builders, the individuals continuing the icebreaker spirit to open up our world. I'm Michael Wood. I'm a filmmaker, a broadcaster, but a special interest in China over many years. I was 16 and I went into the bookshop in Cross Street in Manchester and there was a new penguin classic of late tongue poetry. And what causes you to pick up a book like that, I don't know, but as I turned the pages, it was like a kind of world that I never even dreamed existed. It was so fantastic. Um, of course, the standout was Dufu, late tongue poems, but other greats as well. Poetry, it seems to me, and again, I'm not an expert in these, is really, really important to the Chinese people. And it, and it has been for this huge length of time. The Chinese talk about the poet historians, you know, that Dufu's a poet historian. And in a way, the poets can say things that nobody else can say. And a Chinese person today can quote a line from Dufu and everybody will know what they're talking about. It's about the 8th century, but it can be about politicians now. And, and, and everybody understands that the, you know, it's, it's, in, it's ingrained in their psyches almost. History is the explanation of, of, of everything, really. Uh, but in China, the history is kind of uniquely powerful and influential on the Chinese present. You know, China is the oldest continuous state in the world. It's a civilization that goes back more than 4,000 years. So you have to know about the history because it's a big determiner, not only for the way the Chinese see the world, but even in terms of character, you know. My experience of the Chinese people is how fantastically sociable and fun they are. They're, they're, they're real fun and they're great to be with. And, and, and I felt quite a sense of loss when I first left China. And I've experienced that every time that I've been to China. And in fact, on this, after this last phase in which I suppose I've been about a dozen times, you know, people, including my kids, have said, oh, you must be really glad to see the last of China. And actually, you know, I can't wait to go, to go back, you know. Um, I, I, I love Chinese civilization, if I can put it that way. Just the, the way they do things, the sense of humor, the food, the sociableness. Um, I feel comfortable um, being in China. The story of China films, they weren't shown on terrestrial TV in China. But within 36 hours, each episode was up on, on websites with Chinese translation. Um, we got a fantastic response from the Chinese people. Uh, lots of comments on the interpretation of the history. Um, a lot of people saying, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. A lot of people saying it makes me feel so proud of, of my culture, you know, how much I love my culture, you know, and, and feeling the tragedies as well as the triumphs of the culture. We even had President Xi talking about the films in a, in a, in a TV conference, you know, saying, that we'd done a good job and that Chinese filmmakers, should, we, we need to learn to tell the story of China better. Um, uh, quite a few people loved the way the Chinese people themselves were integrated into the films. I can remember somebody online saying, you see, they're showing what we're really like, that we're fun. And, uh, and I think at times like this, where there's a lot of demonization of China uh, across the world, it's very important that we see each other's humanity and our common, the things we share. A bridge building between any cultures is important always because, uh, you know, respect, understanding, even affection are, are things that motivate us as human beings. And if you don't have that, you can very easily lapse into demonization of the other side if, uh, if things get difficult. There's a great sinologist called Simon Lays who wrote that China is the other pole of the human mind. And, and unless you understand China, you, as a Westerner, apart from its own intrinsic value and richness and everything else, unless you understand China, you won't understand what, what is truly, what are truly universal values in human society on Earth, or what are just Western idiosyncrasies. So, um, uh, you know, 
it's I think that's re that's a, a, an interesting thought I mean we just need to understand each other better